Here are the latest specs for the upcoming NVIDIA 4000 series GPUs. The top model, the RTX 4090, will come with 24 gigs of VRAM and a default TDP of 450 watts, capable of running at a maximum of 660 watts. So if you don't have an AC in your room, then just like don't buy anything, unless you do enjoy a good sauna. The RTX 4080 16 gig version will come with a default 340 watts and a max total power of 516 watts. And then the 12 gig variant of the 4080 will actually have a different chip than the 16 gig variant, which is already confusing. Just like the fact that you're not following this channel that has tons of cookies and slurpees and tech news or at least one of those. And the 12 gigabyte 4080 will run at a bit more of a reasonable 285 watts with a max of 366. So it seems that the trend with the new computer components is to just add more power, I guess. We've already seen the numbers for the upcoming new CPUs from Intel and AMD. They will both be increasing the TDP. AMD will be running at like 240 watts. Intel apparently Apparently we'll be able to go all the way up to 340 watts and now we have more leaks uh, for the RTX uh, 40 series which I mean the 4090 will be able to run at a max of 660 watts so if you're gonna have a top-end PC you know a new top-end PC uh, you could potentially have basically a 1000 watt heater right next to you in your room while you're working which which is pretty crazy i mean the heater in my bathroom uses 2000 watts uh so half of that i mean uh, absolutely ridiculous so in that sort of a case you do need to be in a pretty big room uh or straight up have air, air conditioning or probably have air conditioning in any case uh so now we got the leaks for uh the top free GPUs. Uh, some things are kind of confusing, so I'm just going to go over these things real quick. So firstly, I don't really care about most of this information, uh, you know, like such as the memory bandwidth speed, uh, such as the boost clock, uh, amount of CUDA cores and stuff like that. You know, a lot of stuff changes uh, with different architectures. And what I prefer to do is instead of just sort of wasting my energy and time, just speculating what these uh, GPUs might be capable of, uh, I just wait for them to come out, uh, wait for the drivers to get optimized and then see specific benchmarks to see how, in fact, uh, these GPUs perform, you know. Uh, so instead of, for instance, looking at the boost clock, I might just look at some gaming benchmarks, for example. Uh, instead of looking at the memory bandwidth, I might look at something that uh, tests, uh, for instance, how good a card uh, does crypto mining, because that, for instance, requires a lot of memory bandwidth. And, you know, just sort of get the feel for where the cards are for that. Uh, now, these are a little bit confusing. Mostly the 4080 seems to be quite confusing. So first of all, I want to say, uh, we are getting a 16 gig 4080, which is a big, big improvement. Uh, Nvidia has, it, they straight up didn't put enough memory in the 30 series uh, cards, apart from the 3090, of course. You know, I mean, for instance, my 3070 has 8 gigabytes of VRAM, which does struggle in certain uh, instances for me, at least. You know, for instance, when uh, editing in Premiere and stuff like that and running a few things in the background, it could get tough. Uh, you know, so AMD did, did better uh, in that regard, but you know, a, a big reason why Nvidia went with less memory for this generation is just because of the supply shortage. So it's very nice to see that Nvidia is giving more uh, memory this generation by a lot. Uh, you know, 16 gigs, I think that is perfectly fine. That is a fantastic, great number. And then we also have the 12 gig version. Uh, which again, it's very nice that we have these two SKUs because 60, not really everyone would need 16 uh, gigs of uh, VRAM. You know, you might want that if uh, you're doing specific applications or if you're running games at high resolutions and you just sort of want to future pro yourself for a little bit longer. But if you're just running 1080p high refresh rate like myself, uh, something like this would be enough. But what's really interesting and very confusing is that you can see the GPU name. So this is the particular chip that is actually uh, in the card. Uh, so you can see uh, the 4080 12 gig version has a different chip. Now, how different the chip is, you know, are these like basically still two completely like the same chips? One just has more cores disabled and stuff. We don't know, uh, but the thing is, uh, the wattage is also quite crazy uh, different. 
and uh, I don't really like this differentiation. I would have preferred something like a 4080 or a 4070 or a 4080 and a 4070 Ti or, you know, some sort of that naming scheme because, you know, just giving it more VRAM doesn't uh, tell the whole story in this case. You know, you think you're just getting more VRAM. Oh, I, I don't need more VRAM, but, you know, it's actually a much better card. So I don't really like that differ differentiation personally. Uh, but yeah, pretty exciting. Uh, insanely high wattage, though. I mean, the uh, the 3090 came out with a wattage of like 300 watts or something like that. The 3090 Ti was like 350 or might have been 400, something like that. Uh, you know, already very power hungry card, very hot running cards. Uh, already required to have gigantic coolers uh, strapped to them. And, you know, also having good power supplies to go with that because or else your cold system could just turn off when, when there's a power spike. So... Pretty crazy wattage, uh, really uh, getting up there. So uh, it's uh, it's gonna be a hot time with all of the new CPUs and GPUs coming out this year. It's uh, uh, you know, uh, ACs are gonna be an absolute must for this generation.